everybody check this out it is game night in Clex style here at remar review i gotta tell you the pen the pen is different so when you go to kahoot.it understand that that pen is going to be different come on in check it out i want to see who's the first person to get in it's kahoot.it but the pen the pen is 238 384. There it is. There it is. Yeah. 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 So you might have to change it. I know people are like, I, I'm trying to get in. Colorado is in the house. Oh, Florida. Hello, everybody. There you go. You guys are in now. Okay. We are going to we are going to allow everybody to enter in into the new pen. And I apologize. It's just, it's just stuff like this happens. Yep. <laughs> Things like this happen today. But come on in. I see Justine and I see Chan, Patty, Sharon. Welcome. It's game nine here at Remar for NCLEX. This is what we're doing. This is how we're doing it. It's Tuesday night. This is the final week of Remar Nurse University. And as is our custom, I only have, as is our, as is our custom, we are giving away prizes for your knowledge. Jamaica in the house. I love it. Come on in. Now with Kahoot, the, the pin is 238-384. Somebody put that in for me. Yeah, Alabama, shout out to you. This is what it's about. I got 50 people. I got 300 people watching. Only 50 people signed in. So we got to make that number a little even. Let's, let's make it even. All right. Let's get in. Let's get in. Wichita, Kansas? Really? Tonight? Okay. I'm for it. I'm down for it. This is the final week of Remar Nurse University. And I'm really excited because on game night, this is an opportunity for actually you guys to do all of the work. I'm not doing any work tonight. You guys are answering the questions and you're racking up points. So remember, you need two devices to play Kahoot tonight. You are going to need to have your, your laptop to see to see the questions or your tablet. And then also you're gonna have your cell phones where you are going to be putting in, putting in the answers, pounding in the answers as quickly as possible, as quickly as possible and as correct as possible. That's the goal of tonight, that's the goal, all right? So come on in, go to kahoot.it, okay? Jersey stand up, yes. Okay, so go to, this is how you do it, go to kahoot.it, or if you have the Kahoot app on your on your phone, then that's that's it to do as well. But then it's going to ask you for a game pen to put in my specific game tonight. And that game pen is simply 238. 384. I got 100 people ready to go to win this money based off of their correct NCLEX questions. You, you're going to want to have two two devices one where you can see i see you patty eight nine laura david gilly sydney ah nikki you made it jacayla you're in all right templar i'm looking for the inclex i'm looking for the inclex master <laughs> all right mark hi how are you i love that name love that name suzu Everybody's pounding in. Come on in. Come on in. I'm allowing more people to join in because I did originally have a different pen. So if you found yourself in the other waiting room, you got to move over. You got to move over. All right. We are in it. We're getting almost 200. We're climbing. Put in. You made it. It's 100. It's over 150 of us playing tonight and I love it. We have Facebook, we have YouTube in the house. Get out your devices. Hey, everybody. Somebody's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> you made it. I'm giving you time. Everybody is being patient today. The pin, the pin is 238-384. It's an easy pin. Head over to kahoot.it so that you can tap into this game. This is a live gaming session presented by Team Remar. All right, 
Somebody says, I'm locked and loaded. People are telling me to hold on. People are like, hold on, I got to go get my laptop. I got to go get, get the desktop out. Get your kid's tablet. Get somebody else's cell phone. It don't matter. It's time to play this game. It's time to play this game. Shout out to Thailand. Where are my international nurses at? Wow. All right. If you are at work, don't get written up tonight playing Kahoot and have a patient waiting on their ice cold water all right and don't get caught up all right uh and if you're driving play safe stay safe all right and i see somebody says i'm at the airport where are you going it's vacation time it's game night time let's go guys it's game night time right now okay arizona in the house how do you how do you get in there's over 200 people uh, there's 200 people. Uh, yeah, I see DC. I see you, DC. I see you, 14th Street. What, what, K Street, M Street. I see you downtown. All right. Um, we are in it to win it. This is the final week of R and U. All right. This is the final week of R and U. And as is our custom, we are going out with a bang. Okay. And as you guys are getting into as you guys are getting into the Kahoot, I just want to remind you that during RNU, if you haven't watched any study sessions, I've been talking about how NCLEX is changing. I've been going over the different question types, the partial scoring, when it is going to go down. And so one of our big pushes during Remarners University is to get everybody who can test to test because you don't want to take that new NCLEX. Not really, not really. So please, if this is your, if this is your uh, opportunity, if this is your privilege, take NCLEX now, all right? Or be prepared for those changes, okay? Are you all in, are you all in New Jersey, in the house? Okay, I got 200 nurses and the number is climbing. It is climbing slowly, but it is still climbing. And so, I'm allowing everybody to get in, okay? Now is the time, absolutely. Come on in. We are talking about NCLEX changing, $100 top prize, $75 second place prize, and third place, let me give third place $50, all right? $50 right now might get you one gallon of gas, but hey, it's still more than what you started with. So I am excited to give out prizes. Everybody that is in, let's get in. We're going to get going. We are starting this game in four minutes. That's it. I'm giving you guys four minutes to get in and get ready. Go get your other devices. Remember, you need two devices. You need a computer that you can watch the questions from, and you also need your cell phone, where you can answer the questions, okay? So you're gonna need two devices. You're gonna need a computer or a laptop or a tablet so you can see the questions. And then on your cell phone, if you open up your browser, if you open up your Safari or your Chrome, you will be able to go to, type in www.kahoot.it and put in the game pen 238 384 238 384 and when you do that when you do that you will be asked to hey it'll say welcome 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 all right you are all in with remar remar tia i see you i'm so happy we got california in the house it's early it's early for you guys but i'm glad you are here okay can't do it, can't do it, it's simple, right? Go to www.kahoot.it and listen, we're gonna go over all types of questions for NCLEX. This is for, this is for RNs and PNs. Oh my goodness, yes, LPN students are welcome. And some people are saying, Regina, I love that shirt. You can get this shirt, you can get this shirt right now if you go to remarners.com. Okay, we are selling the LPN shirts because we love our PNs. We also have RN shirts as well. Um, you may find me in either one of them. Put the link up on the screen if you know where to get the t-shirts from Remar Review as well. If you want to represent, listen, I'd love to see you if you are going for your LPN. 
um, to wear this on your test date. I dare you. I dare you to walk into your NCLEX exam wearing an RN shirt or wearing an LPN shirt. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, here we go. Now, the website to go to for the last time is www.kahoot.it and go to the pen. I'm glad you're in, Monica. Okay, <laughs> 238. 384, okay, and it will bring you to our game location. The numbers are already, they're matching up more, guys. We have 250, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, 255 nurses ready to play. All right, is this challenging for you? We are going to go over, just so your mind is right, we're going to go over arterial blood gases. You're going to get points for that. You're going to get points for knowing about prioritization. Lots of prioritization tonight. I love a good priority question. So the faster you get these things right, the more points you will add up. We're going to keep score. It always happens where somebody looks like they're in the lead and then they get a question wrong and somebody sneaks up on them and then they win. So this may be your night if you are one of those slow to start people, right? You may not get the first five questions right, but you may get that sixth one right and get you the points. So go to kahoot.it. <laughs> also, if you love NCLEX Gaming and you are watching on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to our channel on YouTube because we do these NCLEX gaming nights so frequently. We are the only place where you're gonna find game nights and these amazing prizes. Also as well, if you're on Facebook, go ahead and follow me. Click that like button and we're gonna be in there. Kahoot is starting now, okay? I am tarrying just because in the last 10 seconds, 20 more nurses have joined. And I want this to be the biggest game inexperience we've ever had. So if I'm if I'm talking, if I'm tearing, you're like, Regina, why haven't you started this? Because I'm waiting for Terica and I'm waiting for Marie and I'm waiting for I can, I will, I must. Whoever, whoever put that, you're very dope for doing that. Okay. I'm waiting for Nurse Joy and Wynn and Buddha and Maggie and Charlisa. I'm trying to get every everybody. Okay, I don't have another device right now, just my phone. You definitely are going to need another device because you won't know the questions. Okay, so just go get, just if you go get a tablet or your laptop, Jane says, wait, 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 wait. See, this is what happens. This is what happens. Oh, Lord, bring them in, Lord, bring them in. 299, 300, 300, we, we top 300. Okay, okay. I gotta start. I gotta start. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta get those, you gotta get the, you gotta get your tablets ready. Everybody, go get a drink of water. <laughs> go get a drink of water and come back. Go get a bottle of water and come back. All right. This is this is this is game night. How many questions? I don't know. I don't know. Be prepared. You can't go into NCLEX asking how many questions. You got to be prepared to endure to the end. All right. All right. Are you guys ready now? You want to answer the questions on your phone. Okay. Listen, I'm going to, should I play against you guys? I don't know. Should I play against you guys and beat you? That's not fair. Right. Okay. No, there's not 75 questions. There's not that many questions. Whew. Okay. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. All right. All right. I can't. I got to go. Okay. I got to go. Whew. Somebody said, don't play against us. Don't do that, Regina. Don't play against us. But, okay. I won't. I won't play against you guys. Here we go. Here we go. Kahoot.it game pin is 238384. I'm going. I'm going right now. Are you guys ready? I'm about to start this game. My finger, my finger is slowly pushing the start button. Somebody says, call Mark to pray for us. Uh, Mark, you got to pray for the winner of tonight because they will use this $100 for the good. I believe in it. I believe somebody will use this $100 for the good. And are you guys ready? Everybody, let's take a deep breath. Get those fingers. I'm going in. I'm going in, guys. I'm going in. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, one more thing. They said, if you share this video, you get a chance to win one of our prizes as well. So right now, if you share on Facebook, hurry up, hurry up. If you share on Facebook, you get entered into a prize to win 
something else. Is it cash? What is it? Uh, they got to tell me. All right. I'm going. I'm going. Okay. Jamal, how do you join? You got to get a device, get your laptop or your tablet or your desktop. Go to kahoot.it, right? Or no, get your laptop, your desktop, and you watch this video. And then you take your phone and you go to kahoot.it. And then you put in this pin 238384. Okay, 238384. Okay, I gotta go. Here we go. And we're getting started right. Deep breath now. All right, here we go. It is starting. Ooh, ah. Question number one A client has an allergy to Sudafed. Which of the following statements is incorrect? I will take valerian. I will take echinacea. I will take pseudoephedrine, which is my hung. I will take black cohosh. Go ahead. You are now answering the question, picking the color. I see 100 people have answered. Have you answered? No need to register. Just jump in. Jump in. Kahoot.it. The game pin is down here on the lower right corner. Okay. The faster you answer, you got 10 seconds left. Go to Kahoot.it. Put in 238834. All right. And the timer is going down. 267 of you have answered. All right. 103 people did get the right answer. Good job. Let's see. All right. Belmar at the top. That's all right. The correct answer was I will take uh, Suda ephedrine, Maya Hung, because both of these have ephedra as an active ingredient. So you can't have both. Got it right? Awesome. Here we go. Next question. Who should the nurse see first? Priority here. Who should the nurse see first? A seven-month-old female with bulging fontanelles crying loudly. A three-year-old male with a temperature of 38.8 Celsius. A 10-year-old female 48 hours after a tonsillectomy who is now confused. A nine-year-old complaining of stomach pain. We are live. We are live. Okay. This is showing you the next question. Priority question. Don't mind the numbers. Let me worry about the numbers. I want you to answer the question colors, okay? And you're going to need a second device in order to see that question. Who should the nurse see first? These are your choices. Seven-year-old female, bulging fontanelles. Three-year-old male, temp of 38.8. Ten-year-old female after a tonsillectomy two days later. And a nine-year-old reporting stomach pain. Hey, who got it right? Most of you guys got that right. Let's see if the score has changed. Hey, Nurse Pua, Qua, 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 you on top, you on top. All right, the 10 year old female, 48 hours after a tonsillectomy, who is now confused. This client has an acute change in their condition and they have an airway issue. We are moving on. This is game night. Tap in almost 700 strong right now, Team Remar. Y'all did an amazing job tonight. A client with a history of transient ischemic attacks would be prescribed which medications? All right. Number one, ferrosamide. Two, amiodarone. Three, aspirin. Four, metoclopramide. Metoclopramide. What is going to be the medication you would expect to be prescribed for a patient with transient ischemic attacks. What kind of issue is that? What kind of issue is that? Okay. That is, I'm going to just keep quiet. That is, hey, I got to keep quiet about it. I can't say it because this is all for a prize. Remember, if you share this video, you get entered in to win a Remar t-shirt, whatever one you want. The RN, the LPN, the with God is possible. Yeah, transient ischemic attacks, kind of like strokes. So what are we going to be worried about for our patient? How many of you got this one right? I hope you did. Let's see. Uh, the majority of you did get it right. I love this. Good job, everybody. Correct answer. Did change? Okay, Duchess, you moving up. We got 
we got people that are moving up, all right? Aspirin, this client should be prescribed an anticoagulant because TIAs um, may, be, may predispose your patient to blood clots. Somebody's gonna win tonight. Somebody is going to win here tonight. This is the next question, all right? This is a select all that apply for double points. Whoa, which of the following statements indicate a client is being neglected? Select all that apply. My son takes me to the bank to deposit my money. Or my son forgets to give me my insulin with meals. My son cooks food for me that I don't always enjoy, or my son does not take me to see my physical therapist. Hey, we are in the middle of a select all that apply question right here, kahoot.it. If you go to kahoot.it, our current pin is 238384. And you can join in. We are playing tonight here. Uh, trying to switch it up a bit. This is a live game. You made it. Come on and study. Let's see. How do we do? Oh, my goodness. Look at that. So close. So close. The correct answers were there. There were two. Okay. Um, and let's see. Did our leadership board change? Yes, it did. Just like that just like that. Who's going to win on top? Um, the two were, my son forgets to give me my insulin with meals and my son does not take me to see my physical therapist. So here, when you talk about abuse, you can do sexual abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, or neglect. And neglect is when a patient does not get something that they need. That's neglect. And so those were the two options. Whew, I'm glad you got it right. All right, I'm reading the questions to you as well. So don't, 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 don't uh, stress too much about it. And also, if you don't see your name on the leadership board, trust me, we have had many game nights where the person has not showed up on the leadership board at all. But when the total scores are calculated, bam, they magically appear. So don't give up on yourself. You never know what question is next. Well, actually, here's the next question right here. All right. Next question is this. A nurse is caring for Mr. Reed, who is prepared for surgery. When reviewing the chart, the nurse finds no consent form. What is the initial action to take? One, stop the surgery process. Have the client sign a consent form. Blue, contact the physician, or green, contact the nurse manager. Okay, so Mr. Reed is prepared for surgery, but the nurse has no consent form. What is the first action to take? Red, stop the surgery process. Yellow, have the client sign a consent form. Blue, contact the physician. Green, contact the nurse manager. Woo, this is good. Mm, 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 mm. Three, two, one. Let's see how you guys did. Again, you guys are on fire tonight. Most of you did pick blue, which was the right answer. I see a lot of people pick yellow. Some people thought that uh, signing the consent form. Remember, if I have new grads watching, nurses... Nurses do not, nurses are not responsible for getting that consent form signed. No, 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 no. We don't do that. We don't do that. All right. We got a new, we got a new top score right now that's showing up. Glory, glory, glory. Contacting the physician. This is the next step. The nurse should not stop that surgery process, but contact the physician. Here we go. Get ready, guys. Points for quickness is double points. A nurse is caring for a client diagnosed with a DVT of the right leg and swollen toes. What is the initial action of the nurse? Is it red? Notify the physician. Yellow, check client's oxygen saturation. 
blue assess the distal pulses or green apply ice to the right leg Whew. i love this question mm. typical inclex question you're caring for a client with a deep vein thrombosis they have a they have right leg and swollen toes okay so they have a dvt of the right leg and they have swollen toes what is the initial action of the nurse red notify the physician yellow check the client's oxygenation status hmm. blue assess the distal pulses or green apply ice to the right leg let's go remar nurses you can you will you must get it right it's blue it's blue. Most of you guys did get it right. Remember, the first step of the nursing process says this. You want to assess, assess, assess the client. So assessing the distal pulses is going to be the first or initial action, okay? Um, the first or initial action before calling the physician. And this is a double point one. So ah, shout out to those who are getting these double points. They're going to add up. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Another double point. Hey, the primary way hepatitis A is spread is by which route? A, uh, red <laughs> during sexual intercourse. Yellow, by contact with infected body secretions. Blue, through fecal contamination of food or water. Green, through kissing that involves contact with mucous membranes. Wow. Hepatitis A, this is taking you back to the fundamentals. Yes. And infection control. Welcome. This is Remar Review, the hottest NCLEX review right now on the planet, right now. Over 700 nurses are studying here, nowhere else on the planet. Not one other place are you going to find 700 nurses in one location right now. We are so, oh man, y'all are the best right now. So what do we have? You guys got it again. Yes, 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 yes. I, I love, I love it when you guys get it right. I love it. You should feel good about yourselves. This was double points. We got five still holding on strong, but not by much, not by much. Next question could change the game. Hepatitis A is absolutely fecal contamination of food or water. All right, here we go. We have hundreds of nurses playing right now, literally hundreds of nurses. A nurse receives a bag of 10% dextrose for, from the pharmacy, but the bag is not labeled. Which, what is the initial action of the nurse? Red, contact the pharmacy to let them know about the error. Yellow, hang the bag and administer it to the client. Blue, send the bag back to pharmacy. Green, contact the unit supervisor. Okay. A nurse receives a bag of 10% dextrose, but the bag is not labeled. What should she do? Should she call the pharmacy to let them know about the error? Should she hang the bag and give it to the client? Should she send the bag back to pharmacy or contact the unit supervisor? I'm interested to see there, there's already a divide here. Some people are saying blue, some people are saying red, red, blue, red, blue. Which pill is it gonna be? <laughs> All right, four, three, the, over 300 nurses have answered. What is the majority calling for? Ooh, the correct answer was red this time, guys. And the reason why, I know a lot of you guys thought, hey, just send it back to the pharmacy, just send it back. But you definitely, before you send it back, what should you do? Because maybe pharmacy doesn't even know what's going on. All right, so we definitely need to send it. Uh, we definitely need to contact the pharmacy to let them know the error before sending it back. Does that make sense? Okay, you can send it back, but you have to let them know what's going on first. So this just makes sense. Communication, communication is key. That was tricky. You got to call them first. Double points, double points. TR diagnosed with CKD 
was ordered for creatinine clearance. As the nurse, you will collect, as the nurse, you will collect red, a 48 hour urine, yellow, a first morning urine, blue, a 24 hour urine specimen, or green, a random urine specimen. Ooh, I don't, if you are ordered for a creatinine clearance, what are you gonna be checking for again? Is it a 48 hour urine specimen? Red, a yellow first morning urine, a blue 24 hour urine specimen, or a green, just a random urine specimen. I can get a creatinine clearance from there. Ah, uh, this is where we divide the group and this is where we separate the group. Some of you may be very familiar with this. A lot of you guys are saying blue. Hey, 24 hour urine specimen. Did you get it? Did you get this one right? Were you in that number? Were you in that number? Okay. Hey, people are moving up. We have some new names. We have some new names. $100 goes to the top winner as always. I'm hoping it's you. I really am. The creatinine clearance is usually determined by a 24 hour urine collection. Okay. So 24 hours is the expectation of this. Hey, listen, this is like the NCLEX. It is super stressful, but it's real. It's a real thing. Right. And I'm so glad you're here. Okay. I'm so glad you're here to experience this next question coming up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. A client has had a ventricular demand pacemaker inserted. After the insertion of the device, which is the priority nursing action? Red, make sure the IV site is sterile for administering emergency medications. Yellow, assess the implant site. Blue, encourage the client to deep breathe. Or green, monitor the heart rhythm and rate. Let's say if you guys, a ventricular demand pacemaker, what is the priority nursing action here? What is the safe thing for the nurse to do? We check in that IV site. We assessing the implant site. We encouraging deep breathing. Or is we monitoring the heart rhythm and rate. Oh, it's so simple. Let's see. And most of you got this one right. Oh my, yellow was pretty close. But we are monitoring heart rate and rhythm because this is a pacemaker. So the functionality is, no, the functionality is going to be monitoring the heart rhythm and rate. Bleeding is also a concern, but it's not my priority. My priority is, are the beats regular of the heart, okay? Let's move on, let's move on. Wanda, I see you creeping up, you creeping on a come up. Yes, 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 keep sharing this video. The clinic nurse is conducting a physical assessment of a client. Which of the following bodily structures can the nurse best assess by palpation, red, lymph nodes, yellow, lungs, blue, heart, green, intestines. Here we go, fundamentals. I love it. Yep, we are talking about structures for palpation. You better get this one right. Red, lymph nodes, yellow, lungs, blue heart, or you want to take the green, which is the intestines, which one best can be assessed by palpation. Man, this was one of the most stressful things you had to do in nursing school. We had to do a physical assessment in front of the teacher. Oh, glory. So tough. Correct answer. Absolutely. Most of you got it right. Over 200 picked the lymph nodes. Wow. All right, Lizzie O'Conn, you are moving up, trying to get that third, the third position for the $50 win. I see you. The lymph nodes, you can palpate them, and they are good, as well as the front and back of the ears, neck, and areas as well. You'll find them there. 
You on fire. I love it. Here we go. The nurse notes Mr. Evans has fatigue, tachycardia, crackles, and pink frothy sputum. Which nursing diagnosis is the most important? Risk for infection, impaired gas exchange, imbalanced nutrition, activity intolerance. Oh my goodness. Hmm. Look at these symptoms. Look at these symptoms we got. Okay. We got fatigue, tachycardia, crackles, and frothy pink sputum. Which nursing diagnosis is the most important? The most important here, risk for infection, impaired gas exchange, imbalanced nutrition, activity intolerance, activity intolerance. And I got four, three, two, we are going to see who got it right and who got it wrong. Most of you got it right, but I'm concerned because there are 68 of you who did not get this right. I definitely want to, I definitely want to have you in our virtual trainer if you didn't get these questions right. Content, content, content. Every one of these questions are straight content, very little, very little, um, strategies or decision trees can help you if you don't know the information. So we particularly go over congestive heart failure, chest tubes, the respiratory priorities for NCLEX. So get in the virtual trainer if you need, if you need to have it. And if you're finding like, okay, I know this stuff, then your content is strong. That's what you want. That's what you want, guys. You want your content to be very strong. Let's see. And the, 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 the top people are holding strong. Impaired gas exchange is going to be the priority. All right, next question is this. A nurse is ending her shift and has to assess four clients. Which client should she see first? Red, the client with intestinal bleeding, complaining of vomiting. The client with a right lobe brain tumor, complaining of vomiting. Pancreatic cancer patient, complains of vomiting during chemotherapy. The client with a new left kidney transplant complained of vomiting. Wow. Everybody here, everybody here is having the same complaints of vomiting, but who should she see first? And it is very clear, it is very clear here um, who is the priority patient here. And this is what I mean when I talk about content and being able to make very good, safe decisions. I see you guys put the answer on the screen. Let's see, the majority of you, the majority of you did not get this one right. Yellow is the correct answer. Um, does this change our leadership board? It does change it a little bit. Yeah, it does change it a little bit. The client with a right low brain tumor, reporting of vomiting, okay? Um, this client should not be vomiting because of increased intracranial pressure, okay? We don't want that increase in the cranium. This is a serious condition. All of the other patients, you would expect to have some vomiting. So we had, um, we had the patient who had chemotherapy. A lot of you guys picked that. OK, um, the patient who had the left kidney transplant, that was a new patient. And that patient after a kidney transplant, you're put on a lot of medications, right, to suppress your immune system. So we expect vomiting. All of the other patients, we're going to expect vomiting in them. OK, but the one who we do not want to be vomiting is the one who has the brain tumor because of increased intracranial pressure. So I hope that makes sense, you guys. I hope that makes sense. All right, we're going to get back into it. It was a tricky one, okay? That one was not easy. Next question is this. A nurse is beginning her shift in the emergency room and has to see four clients, which is the priority patient. Red, a client with no sensation and no pulse in the right leg. Yellow, a client with a gunshot wound to the upper left extremity. 
Blue, a client actively bleeding from the nose after a head trauma. Green, a client with a knife wound to the chest. Here we go. Who is the priority patient? Red, a client with no sensation and no pulse in the right leg. A client with a gun shot wound to the upper left extremity. A client actively bleeding from the nose after a head trauma. Or green, a client with a knife wound to the chest. Mm, mm, mm. Four very serious patients, but hey, green was the priority. A lot of you picked red. Did you see it was the no sensation and no pulse? Was that it? The no pulse? Remember, we want to pick airway, breathing, circulation in, in most instances. And so the client with the knife wound to the chest, what kind of issues are they going to have? Yeah. What kind of issues are they going to have? They're absolutely going to have, they're going to have issues with their airway. So we are going to pick that patient over someone with um, circulation issues. So no pulse, right? Uh, no pulse, that's a circulation issue to the right leg. All right, yeah, yeah. Good job, good job, those of you who got that one. That was a tricky one. Here's another question coming at you. Don't give up, let's try this one. When transferring a client with right side weakness from a wheelchair to the bed, the nurse should stand on which side of the patient? Red, the right side. Yellow, the left side. Blue, in front of the client. Green, behind the client. Okay. Transferring a client with right side weakness from a wheelchair to the bed. Okay. Which side should the nurse be on? Red, the right side. Yellow, the left side. Blue, in front of the client. Green, behind the client. Okay. Which side? I see the comments on the screen. If you're loving this, you're going to love the full NCLEX review. I promise you. If you guys love this class, you're going to love my entire course. I want you to experience it. We are talking NCLEX here. The correct answer is going to be the right side of the patient. You want to stand on the side of weakness when you are transferring the patient. It was red. It was red. It was red. Yeah. Okay. Up. Oh, we had a change in the leadership board for the third place, but the, the numbers are still climbing. And there are people, if you don't see your name, trust that your points are still being calculated. Trust me. They are. All right. Um, so the right side when transferring a patient. Excellent job. Almost 900 nurses. Share this video. Let's do it, guys. Double point time. A client has been treated for multiple organ failures and has had major thoracic surgery. Which of the following indicates the artificial airway should be removed? Red, gagging. Yellow, incre reported increase in pain. Blue, restlessness. Green, clear lungs on auscultation. Woo, this is an excellent, excellent question. All right, we are talking about which one indicates an artificial airway should be removed. Red gagging, yellow reported increase in pain, blue restlessness, or green clear lungs on auscultation. I'm not saying a single thing. Oh. I'm quiet. Gagging was the correct answer. Yeah. We're talking about getting an airway removed. We're talking about which one. Okay. Okay. I love this. I love this. The correct answer. The correct answer was gagging. And gagging is what indicates the client is able to clear their airway. Okay. Client is able to clear their airway and perform adequate oxygen exchange. All right. 
this is it. If you are a repeat test taker, definitely see that content helps you to understand. Here we go. Next question is this. A nurse is teaching a conference on ketoacidosis. He is aware the most common cause of ketoacidosis is which of the following? Red, hyperglycemia. Yellow, anesthesia induced. Blue, hypoxia. Green, peripheral vascular disease. Okay. Answer, answer, answers on the screen. Fast answers. He is aware the most common cause of ketoacidosis is which of the following? Red hyperglycemia. Yellow, anesthesia induced. Blue, hypoxia. Green, peripheral vascular disease. What is ketoacidosis anyways? What even is it? <laughs> you guys got it. You understand the assignment. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, all right. The correct answer was absolutely hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia is not having enough insulin, so ketoacidosis can be the result of untreated hyperglycemia. Good job. Listen, if, even if you don't see your name on the leadership board, the scores are adding up in the background. Keep playing. Keep playing. Our question here is coming up for double points. A nurse gets floated to a medical surgical unit. A client is diagnosed with C. difficile colitis. Okay. Which of the following are the most important to prevent the spread of the disease? Okay, red, gown, goggles and gown. Yellow, hand washing and gloves. Blue, gloves and goggles. Green, gown and face mask. Okay. We're talking about C. difficile colitis. This is a basic principle of infection Control, how we how, how do we best prevent C. difficile? Red, goggles and gown. Yellow, hand washing and gloves. Blue, gloves and goggles. Or green, gown and face masks. Get in, get in. There is still an opportunity to play here. The correct answer for preventing the spread of this. Oh, a few people did not get this one right. Hand washing and gloves. Hand washing and gloves are going to be the most important and effective way, period, to prevent the spread of disease. Okay, to prevent the spread of disease. That's what we have here. Next question, tap in, get ready, double points. The nurse manager has assessed the client's conditions in a busy medical unit are higher in acuity than anticipated. Which is the most appropriate action for the nurse manager to take? Red, request one to two nurses to work an extra shift. Yellow, contact a travel agency for further assistance. Blue, Use nurses from a temporary staffing agency. Green, leave the staffing as it is. We're talking about, we are talking about appropriate actions for the nurse manager to take when the acuity is higher than anticipated. This is gonna be a divider here. I can tell already. I'm interested to see how you guys did. Okay. The correct answer was request one to two nurses work. Yeah, one to two nurses to work an extra shift. Okay, do we have any changes here? Okay, our tops are stopped. We got Duchess is making a come up three in a row. 
Red was correct requesting one and two nurses to work an extra shift because the current staff, the current staff are going to be best to meet the need. Hiring temporary, a lot of people hire temporary or travel nurses, but you have to understand that these nurses come with an increased cost and they probably need new or additional training. Um, and so if a nurse can get their current staff to work before hiring a temporary or travel nurse, it's going to be better for the overall finances and budget of that unit. So that's going to be a preference, getting your regular staff to work over hiring temporary nurses, okay, or travel nurses. Here we go. Next question is this. Double point time. Level thyroxine sodium. Is it ministered orally to a client with congenital hypothyroidism? The child vomits 10 minutes after administration of the dose. The most appropriate nursing action is to red, hold the dose for today. Yellow, contact the physician immediately. Blue, give two doses of the prescribed medication on the next day. Green, repeat the prescribed dose. Here we go. So essentially you gave an oral medication. What is the most appropriate action for the nurse to take? What is the most appropriate action for the nurse to take? And that correct answer, we're talking about a uh, hypothyroidism medication, is going to be, is going to be repeat the dose, okay? Repeat the dose. And the reason why is because when you give an oral medication, how long does it take for that oral medication to be metabolized? Typically about an hour, right? Even if it's a rapid acting medication, it still has to go into the body, be dissolved, be metabolized, and sent out through the bloodstream. So I know if I give a, a child a medication and 10 minutes later they vomited the medication, I know that more than likely they have not received any benefit from that dose and it needs to be repeated, okay? And I don't have to call the doctor to tell him that the child vomited 10 minutes and they probably didn't get the medicine that they needed because the doctor is going to know that. I do need to call him and let him know, hey, I repeated the dose, all right, of the medication. There we go. That was the correct answer, okay? And we have a new third place winner. I love it. I love it. I love it. Repeat the dose. And again, I explained it. Yes. All right. Moving on up, I like that. Double points for another opportunity. In caring for a newborn delivered spontaneously, which of the following findings needs further assessment? Red, irregular breathing pattern. Yellow, nasal flaring at rest. Blue, increased heart rate when crying. Green, abdominal breathing. Ooh, this is good. We're talking about a newborn who was delivered spontaneously. Which of the following need further assessment? Red, irregular breathing pattern. Yellow, nasal flaring at rest. Blue, increased heart rate when crying. Green, abdominal breathing. Oh, a lot of you were able to recognize that. Yellow was the correct answer. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty fundamentally um, accurate. Nasal flaring is a sign that a newborn is in respiratory distress. And so we need to do something immediately, immediately. Here's my next quiz coming up. Question is this, Jason has smoked an average of two packs of cigarettes per day for the past 25 years. Which client 
should she see first? Oh, wait, that's not. I apologize, guys. That should not be which client should she see first. It should be what is the number of pack years? If a patient has two packs of cigarettes per day for the past 25 years, please calculate that in pack years. Is it 25 pack years, 2.5 pack years, 50 pack years, or five pack years? And it's a pretty simple um, equation here. So we're just looking for the number of pack years. Please ignore that question there. Two packs of cigarettes per day for the past 25 years. What is the pack years? Surprisingly, a lot of you guys are getting this right. Yes, absolutely. 50 pack years. 50 pack years. Okay, Sydney, you moved up. Hey, 12 correct in a row. I love that. All right, 50 pack years is essentially the number of cigarettes, uh, the number of pack smokes per day which, and then you multiply that by years. So two times 25 is gonna equal 50. Good job, good job. Next question, rolling on in, rolling on in. Okay, Trina comes for a visit to report episodes of chest pain in the past two weeks. What information about chest pain is essential to ask? Red, where's the pain located? Yellow, what is your current weight? Blue, do you have maintenance medications? Or green, do you have high blood pressure? This is important. Definitely assessment, okay? Chest pain in the past two weeks, what is the most important or essential to know? essential to know here. Is it gonna be red, yellow, blue, or green? Red, yellow, blue, or green? Looks like you guys are pretty much all on the same vibe here. Let's see how it shows in the results. Red, yeah, red was correct. Red was correct and it's essential. It, yeah, it gives you a better idea of what's happening. Absolutely. Where's the pain located? The onset of pain, location, radiation, duration, and severity are gonna be the common questions to ask to evaluate this specific chest pain. Absolutely. Quizzes, it's time. Here we go, double points. The nurse is educating a client with coronary artery disease about nutrition. Which of the following should she emphasize? Red, eat three balanced meals per day. Yellow, limit sodium intake to seven grams per day. Blue, add complex carbohydrates to the diet. Green, avoid very large meals. Yep, come on in, come on in. Answer the questions. You get points for correct answers. You get points for fast correct answers. You get more points when you're faster. Yep, that's how it goes. This is the final week of RNU and the amazing sale of the NCLEX Virtual Trainer right now until, whew, until Friday. You can save $200 off, yeah? Let's see, content, avoiding very large meals, avoiding very large meals is the correct answer here. Avoiding very large meals. And our winner board is changing, is changing, a changing. Clients who already have coronary art, um, artery diseases, blockages in their arteries, eating and digesting heavy meals may increase the workload of the heart, the heart rate, the blood pressure, which can lead to a heart attack. Uh, a lot of you guys got that one incorrect. So please, please remember this safety point and this educational point for our patients. Woo! All right, here we go, top nurses. Let's get ready to answer this question. 
The day shift nurse is preparing to feed a client visa, via a nasal gastric feeding tube. Which of the following is the most important action of the nurse? Red, check if the tube is still in the correct placement. Yellow, ensure that the feeding is given at the correct time. Blue, verify that the feeding solution prepared matches the dietary order. Or green, ensure the feeding tube is given at the correct time, okay? So I'll just tell you right now, yellow and green are not the right answers. So here we go, here we go, here we go. Those two are not the right answers. Anytime you see a repeat, don't go with it. So what is the correct answer here? I narrowed it down to two for you. So you guys should definitely get this one. Easy points. Some people still got it wrong. What? <laughs> red, red is the right answer. Oh my goodness. All right, let's see what's happening here. Top winners, top winners still on the board here. Check if the tube is still in the correct placement. Yeah, somebody said, because none of that other stuff matters if the tube is not in the right place. I love that. Yep. Next question is this, double point time. The nurse is giving health teachings on exercises and physical activity to a client with multiple sclerosis. The nurse determines the need for further teaching if the client verbalizes which statement. Red, exercising with minimal rest helps build my stamina. Yellow, proper stretching should be done before starting my routine. Blue, I have recently added brief walks in the park as part of my routine. Green, I can lift weights and do resistance training. Hmm. We are looking for a statement that requires some further teaching, okay? Over 200 people have answered so quickly, my goodness. Correct answer is red. Oh, red. Why is that the correct answer? What's wrong with red? What is wrong with red? I'm glad you guys got it right, though. Let's see. Still holding strong. Red is incorrect because people with multiple sclerosis are encouraged to do physical activity at a moderate level with regular intervals, okay? So that means you want to, you want to have some rest in there, okay? You want to have some rest built in there. We're moving on, we moving on. Yeah, that's way too much exercise. Mr. James is admitted with an acute asthmatic episode. Which factor should the nurse expect to be the provoking factor that caused the asthmatic attack? Red, he wore a new suit made of synthetic fur two days ago. Yellow, he stayed up late as he was out at his local bar. Blue, he smoked more cigarettes than usual during the past week. Or green, he slept on a new feather pillow. Here we go. Is it red? He wore a new suit made of synthetic fur two days ago. Yellow, he stayed up late as he was at his local bar. Blue, he smoked more cigarettes than usual during the past week. Or green, he slept on a new feather pillow. Correct answer was absolutely green, guys. Green, that new feather pillow. It caught a lot of y'all slipping. It really did, yeah, okay? The new feather pillow, asthma, absolutely can trigger uh, episodes by foam feather or down pillows, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we've been studying 
hard for over an hour. Here's double points. The physician orders for Mr. James to have a respiratory exam. The nurse is aware the purpose of the pulmonary function test is to. Oh man, okay. Red, he wore a new suit made of synthetic fur two days ago. I apologize, guys. Blue, determine the extent of her ventilatory deficiency. Yellow, evaluate which areas of his lungs are affected. Or green, determine the cardiopulmonary perfusion functions. We are trying to find out the purpose of the pulmonary function test. We are trying to find out the purpose of the pulmonary function test. Okay. All right. What do you guys say here? Five seconds left. Five seconds left in this question. All right. The correct answer is to determine the extent of her ventilatory deficiency. So it is going to be blue here, blue here. Hey, we had a new third place winner coming up. Come on, let's go, let's go. Cookie is back with three winning streaks. I love that. Yes, good job, everybody. Okay, more time. All right, I'm giving you guys as much time as I can. The timer is already predetermined. So you got a chance, you got a chance. Mrs. Smith requests pain medication two hours after she received the previous dose. What is the priority action of the nurse? Red, assess the pain. Yellow, educate Miss Smith that it is not quite time for her medication. Blue. Give Miss Smith her medication. Green, notify the physician that she is still in pain. All right. We are talking about Miss Smith requests pain medication two hours after she received the previous dose. What is the priority action of the nurse? Red, assess the pain. Give her the medication. Educator, notify the physician. All right, it is going to be red. We want to assess that pain. There's a pattern here. Don't call the doctor without information, okay? If there's something that the nurse can do, then the doctor should be called after doing that thing. Because if you call the doctor and he says, well, what is her pain? What is she rating it as? You know, and you don't know that information, he gonna be looking at you crazy. Like, why did you call me without having something to tell me? All right, so make sure that you assess what the patient is, is, is going through, what, what's going on. Okay, moving on, moving on. Assessing the pain is going to be, <laughs> yes, yes. Do that assessment first. Here we go. Final question, double points. A new nurse is working in an emergency department. Using the best judgment, who is the best team to cover the triage area? Red, an advanced practice nurse and an LPN. Yellow, an advanced RN and an experienced RN. Blue, an experienced LPN and an inexperienced RN. Green, an experienced RN and a nursing assistant. We're talking about who is the best team in that triage area, red, an advanced practice nurse, and an experienced LPN. Yellow, an experienced RN and an inexperienced RN. Blue, experienced LPN, inexperienced RN, or experienced RN and an assistant. The correct answer was yellow. Most of you guys got that one right. Amazing. Here we go. So an experienced RN and an inexperienced RN are going to be the ones who are going to be the most effective 
in a triage area because RNs can assess and that is going to be super important in a triage area and the experienced one is going to be helping the inexperienced person to grow. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the game night podium number three is Lisa Ocon, number two, Sydney, and number one, we got our number one winter is foul. So if you take a picture of your screen, if you are one of these three winners, just screenshot it and I want you to send it to me, send it to me at support at remarreview.com and we will be giving you your first place uh, winner prize of $100. Second place, $75, and third place, $50. Congratulations. This was another fun time of studying, another fun time of studying with you guys. I, I literally had a good time, okay? I literally had the fun. This hour went by. We've been studying for almost an hour. It went by so fast. So thank you guys so much for joining us. We are finishing up Remar Nurse University. And so we have been talking about the changes for NCLEX pharmacology all month since June up until now. And then if you guys are ready to get into my NCLEX virtual trainer, guess what? This is the final week that we're not doing $50 off. We're not doing $100 off. We are literally doing $200 off of the virtual trainer package. And so this is the program that has helped nursing students all over pass their NCLEX exam. And I love being able to help you get your nursing license. Even if you think I can't do it, it's impossible. I, I don't know if I'll be able to do it. Um, I have helped many, many nursing students to do it. So I wanted to take a minute and allow you to hear, hear from some of our nursing students. Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany and I am a Remar nurse. I took my NCLEX on June 15th and I passed. On the first try, I ordered the VT and took it in three weeks. I did the course in three weeks because I had already had my date set. And you know, this book and this, the quick facts, this stuff is the truth, y'all. I had a baby the last four months of nursing school and I was a little worried when I returned back to school from maternity leave because I was like feeling like I couldn't remember many things. And, you know, I would just say that while taking my test, I just was thanking God that I did the VT because there were things that I probably would not have remembered or been able to really critically think about had I not taken the course. So, you know, for those out there who need some extra encouragement, just take it from me. like. This is everything and I'm so grateful. And and the my favorite part, my favorite part about this is that the Remar team is faith-based. That means a lot to me. And it helps to reinforce and keep me encouraged with, you know, just the thought of, you know, with God, everything is possible. And that, that is so true. That is so true. So just continue to stay focused out there, y'all. Get the VT. Get the VT. You owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself to do it. So Hey, Remar family, this is Diana, and I am here to give my testimony about passing the NCLEX. In March, I finished nursing school, and I signed up for the Remar virtual trainer, which I received in like three days. I started it. I did it. It took me about six, seven weeks. I finished the whole thing. I finished the workbooks and everything. And then I took my NCLEX this weekend and I passed. I could not do it without the help of Remar Virtual Trainer, the help of God, and the help of the Remar fam up online doing the mini classes, Monday Motivation. And I loved it. I love the virtual trainer. It's like being in class. Um, you just got to do it at your own pace, finish the whole thing. You can, you will, you must pass this. As soon as I finished nursing school, I decided to try Remar Review to prepare for NCLEX. And so I purchased the virtual trainer NCLEX as well as the 
quick facts and I really enjoy the way Regina teaches everything you need to know for NCLEX. Everything is well organized and it prepares you for NCLEX basically. Uh, it, it gives you all the information you need to know and I passed NCLEX on my first attempt. So thank you Regina for all of your help and I highly recommend it. Nice! Love, love, love when nurses finally are able to get jobs and practice. And especially if you are, um, you know, wanting to have the information to make you more confident, even if you just, if you just had a baby, if you didn't just have a baby, but you want to make sure that after nursing school, you are prepared for your licensure exam, the virtual trainer does that. And remember guys, that you're going to get the physical books, but you're also going to get the online system and you get immediate access to that. So you can literally, once you sign up for today, hit your training center, you will get my entire catalog with progress, with your daily study calendar, and you will be able to watch all of my full lectures, right? And I've been going over them. Actually, I'm gonna play one in a second, but I love just showing you guys one of my favorite features of the virtual trainer. And when you get in it, you will be more familiar and you'll you'll navigate um, to the important things. But I want to just jump in here and show you that if you ever had an issue with knowing what to study or how to get started, um, the, the virtual trainer will solve that for you because we do have in the file vault your daily study calendar. And so this is what you are going to use every time you sit down and study and literally i have you a week <laughs> worth of work to do but let me just say this i always put in a rest day during the week and i never have you studying on saturdays or sundays okay i let you take the weekends off because maybe you were like my one student who did my program in in three weeks you just had a baby and so you, you're not going to study every day from eight in the morning to eight at night. If you guys look here, no matter what week that you're on in the program, you are not studying for more than three hours a day. That's it. Like I, I, I make sure that you are not spending all day studying. So this is the program for those who need accountability. If you are a registered nurse or a practical nurse, we have a calendar for you, it is part of your program, it's part of your learning. Um, and I wanted to make sure that if you are definitely one of the students who are just like, I just need to know what to study, how long to study, that the virtual trainer would solve that for you. Um, this may not be for everybody, but if you are a person that wants to have control of this process, the virtual trainer is gonna help you to do that. Okay, so especially if you are a repeat test taker or um, an international nurse, you need to consider spending time in the full program with that daily study calendar. All right, so I'm gonna go in and I wanna show you one of my favorite lectures um, because it's straight, simple, to the point. If you have not ever studied with me before, then uh, this is your opportunity to see what a video was like in the virtual trainer. Let's get out. If you get out a notepaper, some, some tablets, uh, to take notes, let Diabetes insipidus versus syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormones should really be an advanced clinical topic because most nursing students really don't know the nuances between the two. I find too that most nurses working forget how they are different. So let's start with this. Both are a problem with the antidiuretic hormone. Both are a problem with ADH. So what does the antidiuretic hormone do? Can you think about it? Let's, let's look at it like this. When you have a diuretic, what is the function of the diuretic? What does diuretics tell the body to do? They tell the body to get rid of water. So if we have something that's anti-diuretic, what is it gonna tell the body to do? It's going to instruct the brain to tell the rest of the body that we are holding on to water. We are retaining fluid. 
So both of these conditions will be a problem with fluid in the body. Now let's look at diabetes insipidus first because we can learn a lot from just the name diabetes insipidus. So when we see the word diabetes, what do we think of? Most of you all will say we think of high blood sugar. We think of hyperglycemia, but that is not what diabetes means. The word diabetes means a person who is putting out a lot of urine. That's what it means. It means a person who's putting out a lot of urine. The term after diabetes will describe what that urine looks like. So here we have diabetes, somebody that's putting out a lot of urine, and we have insipidus. The term insipidus means clear, colorless, odorless, tasteless. Because remember, back in the day, doctors used to drink urine to determine what kind of illness a patient has. So diabetes insipidus used to be called water diabetes as well because the urine looked like water. But it is a problem with too little ADH. So you don't have the antidiuretic hormone in the proper amount telling the body to keep water. So it just puts it out. It just puts out all the fluid because there's no antidiuretic hormone there. So when you think of diabetes insipidus and the signs, the signs are severe dehydration. Yes, because somebody with diabetes insipidus has a very high increased urine output. So the urine output can actually be up to 30 liters a day, which is a lot of urine. Also, because the patient is so dehydrated, they're going to be thirsty. They're gonna be complaining of thirst. Now critically think here, somebody with diabetes insipidus that's putting out a lot of urine, is their blood pressure going to be high or low? What do you think? Is the blood pressure gonna be high or low? The blood pressure is going to be low. So what is the heart rate going to do to compensate? The heart rate is going to increase. So you will have those two vital sign changes. But look at the signs again. Do we see hyperglycemia anywhere in diabetes insipidus? Do we expect the blood sugar to be high? No, not at all. So that's why it's so important for us to study the content because on the exam, I'm telling you, hyperglycemia will be a choice there to determine if you really know what you're talking about. All right, so diabetes insipidus has nothing to do with blood sugar ranges. So what is the treatment for diabetes insipidus? What is it? Because the client does not have enough of the antidiuretic hormone, we need to supplement what is supposed to be there. So we need to give a medication that's going to act like the antidiuretic hormone. Do you know what that medication is? It is vasopressin, vasopressin. Yes, vasopressin tells the body to hold on to water. It's really good to also improve low blood pressure. So if you plan to work in the ICU where patients have problems maintaining their blood pressure, vasopressin will be a very popular medication for you. Now that you understand when you have too little ADH, let's look at syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone where you have too much of that antidiuretic hormone. You have way too much. So it is telling the body that we're going to save all of the water that we have. We're not gonna put out any fluids. <laughs> so the signs of SIADH are fluid overload, of course fluid overload. Also, oliguria. Oliguria is very little urine output. Because the client has an increased fluid intake or fluid overload, talk to me about their sodium level. Will the sodium level be up or down? We would expect that sodium level to go down because of the fluid overload in SIADH. Now with diabetes insipidus, we would expect that sodium level to be way high because the patient is dehydrated. But here, low sodium level. So with the low sodium level, we're also going to see 
a client that is confused. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you guys know the condition, SIADH now. Tell me the treatment. What is the treatment for somebody who has too much fluid in their body? What are we going to give them? We're going to give them diuretics. Yes, we're going to give them diuretics. And specifically, the osmotic class of diuretics is going to be best because that's going to help pull water off of the brain too as well. Also, we definitely would want to put these clients on fluid restrictions. So you have this whole page filled out and now you understand the difference between diabetes insipidus and SIADH. Thank you for studying with Remar. We're gonna keep making it simple for you guys. Uh, and we're moving on to the next topic. So if you have the virtual trainer, then you know in your virtual trainer workbook, you would be filling out page number 91, where I go over diabetes insipidus versus syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. So that is how the books work. People ask me all the time, what do I need the workbooks for? The workbooks are to help you write down your notes. So you're not just scrambling on like random pieces of paper. You have all your notes plus your homework, plus your practice exams, plus your clinical judgment scenarios all in one place. And that's the beauty of the program, that if you're a visual learner, the visual's there, the auditory is there. But if you're a reader, writer like me, then you can, you will, you must pass NCLEX because I have addressed all of your learning needs. So if you guys remember, I've been doing this for about 10 years, well, a little bit over 10 years. And this is the best NCLEX review that I have put out. It has helped students from all over the world because they're able to get right in and get started, right? And the all the information is updated, right? Somebody says, I, I still use my workbooks over and over and it's great. That's the goal. I want you to always have this information. And so... I wanted to answer some questions that I saw come up about the virtual trainer. The first one is when you get the virtual trainer, how long do you have it? So when you jump into the virtual trainer, like when you get it, you are going to log in and it's going to open up immediately and you're going to have 90 days inside of the virtual trainer. So that is more than enough time because remember my program is only six weeks. Some people do it quicker than six weeks because they don't take the rest days that I build into it. So if you don't take the rest days and you study on the weekends, you are able to really get through my program in a much faster way. But it's your discretion. It really is. What's more important for me is that you have the information. That's the hardest part. Just getting the information. How long do you take with the information? That's up to you. That's up to you. Um, and so you get 90 days in the virtual trainer. People ask me about the quizzes in the virtual trainer. There are practice exams. They are what I call accountability exams because you do have to answer those questions correctly before you move on. OK, um, you do. You have to get a 95 percent in my virtual trainer for your quizzes in order to move on. So uh, it's a challenge. I want you to challenge yourself. Can you take the quizzes over again? Yes, you can. Absolutely. You can. But the goal is that you're not just passively flipping through the information. My uh, program is not just questions. It's not just a question bank. You actually have lectures, homework, and exams. It's like going to school. And some people need that. Is it for everybody? No. But for those of you who need a content review, this is for you. So I do have one. There is a separate program for RN and PN, depending which one you are. You can access this from your computer. You can access this from your tablet, from your cell phone. However you like to study, you can get it in with the virtual trainer. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so cool. So it says, yes, use this and only this for my LVN past the first time. You in California, huh? Going to be using it again when I finish my RN. Absolutely. Um, what other questions do you guys have? The, okay, yes, this is for the current NCLEX. I'm trying to encourage you guys to take your NCLEX now before next generation rolls around. I don't want you taking the next generation NCLEX if you don't have to. So right now, because we're not taking... Usually I do a $50 off sale or $100 off sale. It's like Black Friday or something like that. We're doing $200 off of the virtual trainer until Friday. So that's literally a dollar and 80 cents a day. A dollar 80 cents a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is all I'm asking you to invest in yourself. So if you think about the change you probably have at the bottom of your purse <laughs> or like me in your car somewhere, do you have a dollar and 80 cents to invest in yourself? You absolutely can use this program if you are still in nursing school. Okay. Um, you, you absolutely can. Would you recommend this review rather than you world? I just graduated. I'm getting ready to study. Absolutely. Hands down. And I would, because this you world is a question bank. So for $200, they're giving you questions. They're not giving you a system. They're not giving you um, a, a, a course to study the questions in. They don't even care how you study them. Just random questions you can make up on your own, right? And then you have to memorize the rationales and try to put them together. With the virtual trainer, I'm gonna give you questions, but before I just start asking you questions, I'm going to take you through the information. And this may be information, again, that you may have missed in nursing school, right? So I don't know. Do you remember your pediatric developmental milestones in a way that's appropriate for NCLEX? Do you remember expected changings of aging? Would you like to review basic care and comfort? These are all video lectures. Would you like to review orthopedics, traction, right? Um, would you like to go over skeletal traction versus skin traction? Um, the virtual trainer is going to help guide you through things you may have missed, okay? Are back and honestly, and ready you're going to, to be getting it for about overview. the same price maybe even cheaper than you world. I'm not sure right now, but with this sale, think about the difference that you're getting. You're just getting questions with you world, with the virtual trainer, you're gonna get workbooks, you're gonna get lectures, you're gonna get questions. And if you wanna add a question bank to your virtual trainer, you can do it inside. If you just want questions, you literally can go inside of virtual trainer. And I have a question bank for $29 that's added on. All right. So this is the way I encourage nursing students to prepare for this exam. Make sure, make sure that you cover all of your bases. Because the only thing about question banks that I don't, I'm not sure if students realize this, if you don't do a question on a particular subject, you may not cover it before you take your NCLEX exam. So if you don't do a question on diabetes insipidus or medications to treat diabetes insipidus, or if you don't memorize that information in a long rationale, then you won't have studied it for your NCLEX exam. Whereas the process should be content first, then questions, then the actual exam, okay? It shouldn't be questions then try to figure out the content based off of the random questions because the questions are random. They're randomized questions. So you might have a subject here, a subject there, a subject here, a subject there, and it doesn't go together. So then it becomes your responsibility to turn that question bank into a course or a system that makes sense for you. And so that's why a lot of students, um, they struggle with you world by itself right um and so i tried to explain it <laughs> i tried to explain it the best way i could um random questions or system that's it all right what other questions do you guys have it is content it is absolutely it's, it's content focused um in my estimation nursing students 
can critically think if they have the tools to critically think. But if I just start asking you random questions about a subject that you may not have uh, studied in a long time, of course, you're going to get the questions wrong. I know that. I know I can make you feel um, I know I can make you feel inferior or I can pressure you by asking you a whole bunch of tough questions about a subject that you haven't studied. But what's the point of that? I would rather tell you what you need to know and then quiz you on what you remember from what I told you. That's the best way to do it. That's the best way to do it. OK, um, this is a good question. Um, is there any difference between NCLEX for RN and PN? I'm studying NCLEX for PN, but I am a little bit confused. Great question. I think um, structurally, there are just slight variations to the NCLEX RN and NCLEX PN exam. And I, I say structurally because some people think that the NCLEX PN exam is an easier exam to take because you don't have to know as much but that's not true. The practical nurse has the burden of knowing their scope of practice plus what the RN is expected to do so that they don't do it, right? And so when you are studying for the practical nursing in CLEX, you have to learn the same things. When I'm in the virtual trainer and my practical nursing lectures, I'm teaching them practically the same things as the RN because you still have to know it as a practical nurse, even if you don't do it. And that that is one of the misconceptions about practical nurses is that they don't know as much. They absolutely do know just as much as the RN. OK, so um, I think the focus of the questions are different, but the information should be very similar to what the registered nurse is learning because the practical nurse is responsible for follow-up teaching. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to know everything that the registered nurse knows. It's, it is not an easier exam um, by any means in my estimation. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm, does the VT come with books or do we buy the books separately? Great question. That is a really great question. Let me see. Um, so what will happen is when you go to remarnurse.com, you are going to sign up for the virtual trainer package. And the virtual trainer package comes with two books. It is going to come with your virtual trainer student workbook and is also going to come with quick facts for NCLEX. So, ah! all right. So these two books, this is not the newest version of the quick facts, but you're going to get the virtual trainer student workbook plus the quick facts for NCLEX, and you are going to get your online lectures. That are uh, that is what you're getting right now for two hundred dollars off. Okay, so that is why I'm I'm pushing you guys to make a decision on this package right now because the price is the best that it could ever be. All right, the price is the best that it could ever be, and you're getting everything together. So you're, it's not just the online program and you have to buy the book separately. Um, you get everything in one. That is that is what's my goal. This is the all-in-one comprehensive NCLEX review. You're going to get content, beautiful lectures. You're going to get your books and you're going to get your practice exam. All right. These are the beautiful things. And I'm going to go back in. I want to play one more lecture just so you get a feel of how awesome these videos are. Again, they're not boring. Um, it's not like random people lecturing. It's me. You guys know me. You know how I get down. I'm not trying to have you there all day. Actually, I'm not trying to be there all day. I want to give you what you need to know so that you can go and be great. Um, Let's see, I already have the books. Renewal, perfect. If you need to renew, you can also do that. You can also do that. Matter of fact, let me just let me just see if I can do this. Let me see if I can try to order the package online. Let me see if I can do this. All right, you guys know I'm not the tech person. Okay, but anyways, so if we do this, open up your browser, and if you go to remarnurse.com, okay? If you guys go to remarnurse.com, we already have the price discounted for you guys. So 
If you go to up here at the top corner, it says NCLEX virtual trainer. It may be very small, so I'm going to read it to you. You can either renew your virtual trainer or you can sign up for it. Okay. So if you go to sign up for your virtual trainer, it will tell you that there are three days left to the sale. Okay. So the sale ends on Friday. And people have been asking me about the price. The price now is crazy, all right? It is under anything that is out. Usually during graduation seasons, people increase their price. We are trying to do the opposite because I really want you to have this training. So the price is down to $169 if you need both books. Some of you guys already have my Quick Facts book. So that's going to drop the price down even lower. Okay, so one of the most important things that you can do when you get your package today is make sure you are picking the right program. Are you in the registered nurse program or the practical nurse program? Okay, make sure you pick your training. So I'll just, I'll just go to the registered nurse program and I'll click in enroll. You don't have to put in any coupon or anything, but I do want to go over these options. So if you can't see this, there are four options. Two of them are for, two options are for nurses. There, there are two options, there are two groups. Either you live in the US or you don't live in the United States, okay? That's the first group. So think to yourself, am I living in the United States? Am I in Texas? Am I in Florida? Am I in Colorado? Am I in California? Or am I in Jamaica? Am I in Guyana? Am I in Nigeria? Which one? Okay, so that's it. Let me go back to it. Okay, so the three-month subscription means that you are going to get everything. That means you're going to get the virtual trainer, you're going to get the two books, you're going to get the study calendar. Um, this is for those of you who don't have any of my products. You don't have any of the products. You want to get the full package. And when you click on the three-month subscription, you will fill out your details. This is very important because this is how you create an account. But you can see that the price is going to be there. Okay, and the price is going to be $169 plus $12.50 for shipping. That is the shipping cost. Now, what it will tell you is that in 90 days, you have the opportunity to renew your virtual trainer for an additional 30 days. And so that 30 day price is $50 if you need an extra month in your virtual trainer. Now, you don't have to pay it today. But after 90 days, that is the price for an extra month in the virtual trainer. But remember, when you first sign up for the VT, you're getting three months included into that price plus your books. So it's $1.80 a day. All right. Now, this, um, this is for, again, if you need everything. Okay. If you need everything in your international nurse, okay, um, then you are going to pick RN International Shipment Full, okay? Can somebody answer that? I just want to be sure. If they're in Puerto Rico, isn't that considered the U.S.? Let me know, Team Remar, because <laughs> I, I want to make sure, because that's a great question. We do send packages to Puerto Rico, Um we do send packages to Puerto Rico all the time, but I just want to verify. I think it's U.S. All right. But anyway, okay. So anyways, if you are absolutely um, in another country, okay, you're absolutely in another country. Okay. Team Remar said Puerto Rico is considered U.S. Whew, thank you. <laughs> all right. If you're in another country, you're going to pick the second option and you need both books. You're going to pick international shipment. Okay, international shipment for both things. All right. Now, I hope that's clear. So if you are in any other country, you guys can start listing them for me and I'll call it out. But if you're in any other country other than the U.S., you're going to pick, yes, we ship to Nigeria. So it would be the international shipment to Nigeria. Okay. And with the $200 off, you guys can understand that that is going to 
greatly reduce your cost. You're basically pretty much paying for shipment. And I'm giving you these things. I'm, I'm, I could, I can't even say. You guys know sometimes the the shipping costs alone can be more than the discount that I'm giving you guys today. So that's it. If you're a full, if you need the full program, all right. Um, if you need the international shipment for the full program, that's the second option. The third option. Thank you, Jeanette. Thank you, Janet. I am so happy to hear for you. I'm so happy that you passed your NCLEX. That is what I'm talking about. That's what I love. The third option for the virtual trainer says this. It says minus the quick facts book. So if you only need, if you already have quick facts for NCLEX, you brought it from me, you brought it on Amazon, and you only need this book plus the online lectures, then that's the um, option for you. Now, people ask me all the time, we're gonna go, if I have quick facts, do I really need this? And I have to tell you guys, they both have different subjects in them. So if you only have the quick facts book, you still have to know all of the information that I go over in here. That's why it's best to get them both together. So for example, Quick Facts is a great book, but it doesn't have math, my clinical math lectures, my, um, it doesn't have my psychiatric overview, it doesn't have my prioritization work, and so you definitely want to have both, okay? What else do I want to say? So that is what I mean by minus Quick Facts. If you already have Quick Facts, you click the minus Quick Facts and that will take the price down to 149. So it drops the virtual trainer down to 149. So yes, absolutely Christmas in July. My goodness. Um, and then the RN international shipment minus quick facts is if you need to go outside of the United States. If you need to go outside of the United States and you already have the quick facts book. Okay. So that is how you order the program. Again, this is the RN and the PN is going to be um, pretty much identical, but you can get either one of your programs by going to remartnurse.com. All right, and make sure that you are ordering my virtual trainer um, specifically from me, all right? And another thing, if you guys need to renew if you already have both books and you need to renew, then, then you can hit the renewal to jump back into your virtual trainer because a lot of you are like, okay, I really want to get this done. I've been studying with RNU and I want to start. A great question is, what if you already have the first edition of Quick Facts without the five stars? So this is the original version of Quick Facts. This is the, um, this is the first one I did. It does not have the five stars that look kind of like that. Um, so the difference is if you have the original, then you are missing some very important elements in the updated version. So exactly what those are, are um, clinical skills is not in there. The pharmacology section was totally redone because in this version, it has the generic and trait names in there. And you don't need to know the trait names for your NCLEX exam. And there are also um, about, I think 17 exactly subjects that would be missing that I added in the updated version, okay? So I would definitely say to get the updated version of the quick facts, okay? Because again, I want you to take this exam before next generation. So that's the whole idea, all right? Um, and if you have any other questions, guys, because I don't want to keep you too long. I don't want to keep you too long on here. I am going to take you back into the virtual trainer. And I think I'm going to do, if you have your virtual trainer workbook, I'm going to do, hmm, what video will I do? I will do page... I think I will do page 126. If you have the registered nurse version, I'm gonna do therapeutic communication. And if you have page 126, you can fill out 
it's not it's not very long but you can fill out your workbook here because i want you guys to really know what you are investing in how it is going to help you how it should be used i'm not interested in any surprises so i'm gonna take you into the virtual trainer if you have your workbook we're gonna do therapeutic communication and i'll try to field some more questions that you have because literally this sale ends on friday this is the final week of remar nurse university we started r and u in june we started it in June. So this is it. This is it, guys. We're going to go into the VT. Let's go now. Therapeutic communication has a very important purpose because these are going to be strategies that we can use as registered nurses to help our clients express their feelings more effectively. So I like to use the acronym SOLAR, S-O-L-A-R. These are strategies we can use. The S stands for sit in silence. It is okay to just be quiet and allow the client to express their feelings. The O stands for observe with openness. The L stands for listen and lean forward. These are both therapeutic actions. A stands for at eye level. It's okay to sit down, look your client in the face and be at eye level while you're listening. And then the R stands for relax and also rephrase what the client is saying. Mm -hmm. Now, these are things that we don't do when we're trying to be therapeutic. The first is give our personal opinions. Even if the client asks you, would you have this procedure? What do you think I should do? Would you take this medication? Those are big no-nos. Don't give your personal opinion about their situation. The second thing, is changing the subject. Mm -mm. Third is false reassurance. False reassurance is saying things like, if you do this, you'll feel better. Or don't worry, everything will be okay. Those things make the client feel like you don't really care. Next up, we have arguing with the client. It may be easy to fall into this trap, but don't do it. And also using words like bad, good, wrong, or right are non-therapeutic. On NCLEX, we choose to do these things. And the first is never ask why. Never ask why a client is doing something, why they feel a certain way. We just don't ask them that. Also, when you're being therapeutic, never promise that you won't tell anyone. Because as registered nurses, you do have a responsibility to include other healthcare professionals in some areas of the client's care. So on NCLEX, let's look for number one, open-ended questions, two, answers that focus on the feelings, three, answers that reflect or rephrase what the client is saying. Remember, when you use therapeutic communication, it allows the client to really make their own choices. So the next part of my therapeutic communication, I want to focus on medications. And I want to look at the digoxin parameters before we move on. Now, the digoxin parameters have to do with when to hold the medication. You can give digoxin at any age group. So you know you have to take an apical pulse for a full minute before you administer it. So let's talk about what the hold rate is of the heart. So for newborns, if the heart rate is less than 100, then you hold the digoxin. For one to three years old, if the heart rate was less than 90, then you hold the medication. Three to eight years old, if the heart rate less than 80, then you hold the medication. And then eight to adult, 
if that heart rate was less than 60, then you hold the medication. More therapeutic communications, we're going to look at our important drug, antidotes. Antidotes can also be called reversal agents on NCLEX, but they mean the same thing. So we're going to look at the medication and the antidote. The first medication, magnesium sulfate, the antidote is calcium gluconate. Insulin is glucagon, heparin, it is protamine sulfate. For methotrexate, we have the cuvarin, and for warfarin, you can have vitamin K or fresh frozen plasma. I want to leave you guys with the needle information. Yes, as registered nurses, you will be given a many injections. So I want to talk about the three different kind, the subcutaneous, the intradermal, and the IM. We need to know the skin layers that are penetrated, the gauge of the appropriate needle, and that length. So looking at the subcutaneous injection, the skin layers that are penetrated are first the epidermis, then the dermis into the subcutaneous fat. So you have three there. The appropriate gauge is 25 gauge and the length is 5 eighths of an inch. Next, we have the intradermal. When you do an intradermal injection, you go through the epidermis and into the dermis. The gauge is 25 and the length is 5 eighths of an inch. Finally, we have the intramuscular injection. The skin layers penetrated are the epidermis through the dermis, through the subcutaneous fat, and into the muscle. The gauge required for IM injection is 22 and the length is one inch. Great job guys on therapeutic communication. Let's keep going. All right, so we did therapeutic communications. You guys got an inside look of the virtual trainer. I answered all of your questions that I saw and we had an amazing game night. Is there anything else? Is there anything else um, that we need to do besides let you know that you can, you will, and you must pass NCLEX. Thank you guys for an amazing night of studying. We will be back on tomorrow for Winning Wednesday and then that's it. I'm telling you, that's it. We have to wrap this thing up because your test date is coming soon and so I want you to transition from the free online uh, sporadic study sessions to the comprehensive program. That's what I really want for you guys. A lot of you have been watching me for years, for months, for years, for generations, honestly. And it's time for you now to get your nursing license. Trust me, you don't want to take next generation NCLEX. If you don't have to take it, don't take it. Now, if you want to take it, am I going to be here to help you take it? Absolutely, I'm going to be here. And for those of you who have to take it, I'm going to I'm going to be here to help you. But for the majority of you watching me right now, you don't have to take it. You don't have to wait around. Um so do what you need to do now. I'll be back on tomorrow. I'll be back on tomorrow at nine o'clock for Winning Wednesday. So let's get that in our mind, set your alarm, and we will continue on studying, preparing for your best experience. Okay, everybody else, get inside of your virtual trainer and at least print out the study calendar. Do me that favor. Get in the virtual trainer. If you need to go to the site, remarnurse.com, sign up for the virtual trainer, get in there, print out your study calendar, all right, and have it ready for next week. You guys stay safe. Um, have a blessed evening. Thank you so much for studying with me. I love it. I, honestly, I love you guys. You guys, follow me, please. Let's stay connected during this process, during this journey. It's going to be a great journey, but we got to start now. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye.